You want to write a story that changes people, that changes the way they see themselves and the world and the way they interact with the world around them. And the beautiful thing about a story is you can change people's minds without arguing them into it or persuading them into it, but by simply showing them the way. But how do you do this without your story becoming one dimensional. If you're trying to change the way people see the world and change them to see it the way you see it, it's really easy to make your book one dimensional, preachy, and turn it into just propaganda. So how do you avoid this? How do you make sure you're telling a fun, compelling, exciting story while also changing the reader's mind to see the world the way you see it? For that, we got to talk about the double factor problem. This is a tool we use to make sure we tell a wickedly compelling story that readers will love while also changing the way they see the world. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid. I've been working with writers for over 15 years. All of the training we do here at StoryGrid is based on the 30 plus years of writing and editing experience of my partner, Sean Coyne, the founder and creator of StoryGrid. So what is a double factor problem? Well, first let's look at a single factor problem. A single factor problem has one clear answer all the time. What is two plus two? What color is the sky? What is the boiling point of water? How many times is too many times watching John Wick? The answer to that last one is there's no such thing as too many times. So a single factor problem always has one clear answer. A double factor problem is a problem whose answer changes depending on the context. Now what does that mean? Every real problem in our life that we face is a double factor problem. And the answer to every double factor problem is, well, it depends. Here's some examples. When should I get married? When is the right or wrong time to give a baby up for adoption? Should I enlist in the military? When is the right or wrong time to break off a friendship? And when should I confront bigotry? These are all really big questions where sometimes you should go one way and sometimes you should go the other way. Now, in my last video, I talked about the non-negotiable. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link down in the description, but basically it comes down to what is the one big thing that you want your readers to take away from your book? What is the one thing that you want to change their mind on, change the way they see themselves and the world around them? Now that you have that firmly in mind, it's time to address the double factor problem. And the reason why you need the double factor problem is we have to show both sides of the equation in our story. So let me just give a really kind of gross, crass example of a double factor problem. So here's the question. When should you purposefully suffocate a baby to death? Now, hopefully all of us, our first reaction is never, unless I'm in World War II, Poland, I'm Jewish, I'm in a basement, I'm holding a baby, there's 30 other Jews hiding with me, and the Nazis are coming, and my baby starts crying. Is that when I should suffocate a baby to death? Now you still may say never, but you've got to admit, you're now questioning both sides of that equation. That's a double factor problem. Because the context changed, our answer to the question has changed. So recently I was talking to a writer and her non-negotiable, the thing she wanted the reader to take away from reading her book was that women should break free of their culture break free of the confines, and grab their individualism and live the life that they want to live. Great message. A lot of people need to hear that message. But then I asked this author, well, would you give that same advice to a 17-year-old girl living in Afghanistan under the Taliban rule? She thought about it a minute. She's like, no. I said, well, why? It's like, because she'll probably die as a result. And that's not what I want people to do. Okay, there's a good double factor problem. Yes, you think women should own their individualism and break free of the culture. And yet you can think of a context where that is the wrong answer. That is a double factor problem. For an example of this, let's take this individualism a little further and look at the movie Crazy Rich Asians, which was based on the book by the same title. The double factor problem being asked in this story is, when do you choose to be an individual or when do you conform for the good of the culture and the family? Great question. And by the way, spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you how it ends. So, you know, skip ahead if you haven't seen it already. Here's why I love the double factor problem in this movie. Rachel Chu is the protagonist and she's trying to decide when should she own her individualism and whether or not she should conform and sacrifice herself for the family 
of her boyfriend. At the end of the story, she chooses to own her individualism and is willing to sacrifice the family and the culture to maintain her individualism. Now, the antagonist of this story is Eleanor, her boyfriend's mom. And about 30 years before this, Eleanor made the opposite decision. She sacrificed her individualism for the good of her family and the culture. Now, here's what I want you to see. They're both the right answer. For Eleanor, 30 years before, that was the right answer for her. That was the right decision. And for Rachel, choosing her individualism, that was the right decision. That's what a good double factor problem is. This is why the story Crazy Rich Asians works so well. It doesn't slip into some BS monologue about individualism. In fact, it gives both sides of the equation. It says, in this context, this is the right answer. In this other context, this is the right answer. This is why we love this story, and it's a story that's going to continue to be told. So what does this mean for your writing? If you want to tell a full, three-dimensional story that is believable, that readers fall into, and that you change their mind by the end without it becoming a monologue BS propaganda, you've got to show all the sides of your double factor problem. So how do you do that? You do it by introducing characters that are all dealing with that double factor problem in different ways. Just look at all the characters in Crazy Rich Asians, from Rachel's friends, to the antagonists, to the brothers, to the sisters. They're all trying to figure out how do I maintain my individualism and when do I give it up for the family and the culture? Just go back and rewatch the movie with that lens and you'll see it showing up in all of the characters in that movie. So did you ever wonder why we saw so much about Elizabeth Bennet's sisters in Pride and Prejudice? It's because they were all struggling with their place in finding true love while also fitting into the culture. We got to see how lots of different people are struggling with that same question. Why do you think there's so many dwarves in The Hobbit? They're all dealing with the double factor problem. So this is my second video on how to find the theme of your story. The first one was all about the non-negotiable. What is that change you want the reader to make from the beginning to the end of their story? What do you truly care about? How do you want to see the world change as a result of people reading your book. Now to keep your book from becoming preachy and propaganda and one dimensional, we've got to make sure we tell a well-rounded answer to that problem. Because the way that you see the world, there are times that's the right way and there are times that's the wrong way. And we need to see both sides of that equation in your story. And the double factor problem is how we go about doing that. So you've got to make sure that all the characters in your story are struggling with the double factor problem from different angles. This is what will make your book feel honest and true. And at the end, it will hit your reader in the gut and it will change the way they see the world and themselves in it. As we continue to talk about your story's theme, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you get notified of all the other videos that we come out with. As always, we've got tons of great resources available at storygrid.com. Go there, check them out, make sure you sign up for our email newsletter. But as always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our work here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.